is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode of Good Bugs here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're doing episode number one on ladybugs. Let's go. Bad bugs, bad bugs, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad bugs, bad bugs. So when it comes to ladybugs, ladybugs are probably one of the most common pest control methods that gardeners turn towards to controlling pests like aphids in the garden. And as an organic gardener, we absolutely love having them in our garden. Now, before we get started, I wanna talk about the difference between ladybugs and lady beetles. So ladybugs are what we are actually talking about in today's episode. Lady beetles come from Asia. They're actually an invasive species, and there's quite a lot of differences between the two. You see, ladybugs, if you order from a reputable source online, we're collaborating with Nature's Good Guys. I'll have links to, um, to where you can get an actual ladybug kit like this online to release into your garden. But when you uh, source your, your ladybugs from a reputable source, you should be getting true ladybugs, not lady beetles. They both are really similar in the fact that they have spots, they have a hard exoskeleton. However, lady beetles originate from Asia and they're quite a lot larger and they're usually more red in color. They also have dots on their face, whereas ladybugs do not. And we wanna incorporate ladybugs in our garden rather than lady beetles because we don't wanna promote spreading the invasive species around our garden. We wanna have the beneficial insects like ladybugs in our garden. So now I wanna talk about not only how we use them in our garden, but how they can benefit your garden through natural pest control methods. So when it comes to releasing ladybugs in the garden, there's a few things you can do to guarantee success. The first thing you can do is actually give them a food source. Now, it seems a little counterintuitive because of the fact that we want them to eat the food in our garden, which are aphids, their number one food source. And so by giving them a food source, wouldn't that actually encourage pest problems? And the answer is not really, because these are going to actually control the numbers of pests. If you don't have aphids in your garden, you can still release ladybugs. And it's you know a good gesture to do so because they're gonna stick around, some will stick around. And then if you do have pest problems as a preventative measure, they're then going to step in and kind of keep that balance in check. However, if you don't have a presence of aphids in your garden already, you'll find that about 75 to 80% will just fly away. And that's very normal because these are adult ladybugs. That means they have wings and they don't really care where your garden boundaries are. They're going to go where the food source is. And so if you already have a presence of aphids, that's going to ensure that they're going to stick around that much more. Now, to ensure them to stick around even further than that, giving them a good home or a habitat is the next thing that you should be doing. Things like plants is obviously important. Lots of leaf material, it's gonna give them protection from predators like birds, but also areas for them to breed and lay their eggs. So things like leaf mulch or wood chip mulch, or even plant material like these peas here. If you have places where uh, there's actually good shade, that's where ladybugs will lay their larvae or their eggs. And then when their larvae uh, pupate and form their little uh, larval stage, um, the, the uh, immature ladybugs, um, that's when they actually have the most pest control benefits. The larval stage of a ladybug will consume 10 times more than an adult. And in fact, uh, the average ladybug larvae will consume its body weight in aphids every single day. That is some incredible pest control power. And so it's really important to give them a good home, a good place for them to not only uh, live, but also reproduce. And our garden is gonna be a great spot for that. So we're gonna start releasing some ladybugs and then the final thing you should be doing is giving them some water. A big reason why ladybugs will leave is because they don't have a water source. So it's super important to put out a little water feeder, a tray of water with some stones in it, just like you would do with something like, like honeybees. Having a good water source is very important because they are alive and they do need water just like you and I do. All right, we're gonna get these open here. And it's also super important to put them in different spots in the garden. When we put them in our garden here, we're gonna make sure that we put them in multiple spots. So that way they're encouraged to not only, you know, kind of adventure throughout the garden, but also find those pests. And because it's been so hot and so dry, I guarantee you we probably have some pests in the garden. So let's say you don't wanna actually go out and buy ladybugs to release in your garden. You wanna encourage them through attraction. You can do that by planting a few flowers in your garden that are known to attract ladybugs. And these are flowers that actually produce what's known as an umbel. You can plant plants like yarrow, dill, carrots, fennel, 
or even angelica. These are plants that produce an umbel. Now an umbel is just a type of flower. It's a very flat top flower, produces a lot of pollen, and the pollen that those flowers produce is what attracts the mature adult ladybugs in your garden. And so you can actually attract them without even buying them, which is great, but also ladybugs will naturally find their way into the garden if you provide a food source. And sometimes you don't provide the food source, but a sick plant or a stressed plant will be attracting things like aphids into your garden, and that will naturally attract something like ladybugs to counteract that, uh, basically bring balance into your garden. And so a lot of people think that because they have ladybugs in their garden, that that means that they have a problem. And what I would say is that in an organic garden, a healthy balance is the solution. It's not a problem, it's a solution. Because with us as gardeners, we're really trying to coexist with the systems around us. And what I find is that if there is no pests whatsoever, that sometimes that means something is a little bit out of balance because it's very natural to encounter pests in some way, shape, or form. And I know a lot of gardeners write in saying, I would prefer to have a pest-free garden. And I would say, if you're organic gardening, that's simply really unattainable to have a completely pest-free garden. You will have pests in some way, shape, or form, but it's about creating the balance between good bugs and bad bugs that helps to keep that balance in check. And so uh, let's talk about some ways that you can actually help them to overwinter next, because that's the next thing, is that once you release them in your garden, it's important that you actually facilitate a way for them to survive over winter as well. So like I said, encouraging them to stick around is the best way to actually facilitate a home for them. Now, ladybugs can live up to three years, so it's not a seasonal bug that simply uh, you know, pupates, forms its larvae, uh, or you know, pupates from a larvae into a beetle, then lays eggs and dies within one year. They actually can live a very long time. Now, a lot of you probably noticed that the lady beetles, the Asian lady beetles, will get into your windows, little cracks in between your siding in your home or in like a dormer in your window. And that's because they actually love to get into some place that will provide some level of protection from the harsh cold. What you can do is you can actually leave things in your garden, things like, like your sunflowers over winter that actually has a hollow stem or by leaving some of your plant material by not cleaning up your garden fully can actually provide a home for those beneficial insects. You can also go out and actually buy an insect home. We've actually made an insect home here on the channel. Uh, if I can find a video of it, I know we did it. Um, I'll post a link in the description box down below. And you can actually make yourself an insect home for not only things like ladybugs, but also things like parasitic wasps and leaf cutters, which are gonna be in a later episode of this Good Bug series. And so by giving them a home where they can stay in overwinter, what they do is they consume their own body fat over winter, and then when, they, when it warms up, they simply come out of dormancy, and they fly, find a mate, they lay eggs, and that whole life cycle happens all over again. And so by encouraging them to stay in your garden, not only seasonally, but also uh, many seasons, it can help to actually encourage a good population of ladybugs in the garden, help to keep your pests down when it comes to aphids, and also to really just help to facilitate a more natural ecosystem in your organic garden. All right, now the final thing is making sure you're not gonna unintentionally kill off your ladybugs. By using things like organic insecticides in your garden, you can actually accidentally kill off the ladybugs. Now we use, in the early season, something known as diatomaceous earth. It's a ground up, basically fossilized seashell, and it's a diatom. And that powder is very abrasive. It has a lot of surface area. Not abrasive to you, but abrasive to beetles. Any insect that has an exoskeleton. And those, that exoskeleton, what it, uh, what it forces the animal, to, or the insect to do, is it forces it to molt or shed its exoskeleton. And because ladybugs are basically in the same family as uh, things like Japanese beetles or flea beetles, it's really important that we realize if we just released ladybugs in the garden, that we're gonna wanna stop using something like diatomaceous earth. There is kind of a trade-off, kind of a balance, that if we use diatomaceous earth, there's a chance we can kill some of those beneficials as well. And it's just that you gotta weigh the pros and cons of what you're using in the garden, even if it's organic. And by kind of being mindful of what you're using, the effects of what you're using can have on your garden, and knowing those things going into it, can help you just kind of 
uh, have a better organic garden as a whole. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you're really excited for this series. We're gonna be doing this entire series on good bugs in partnership with Nature's Good Guys. This is not a sponsored video by any means, but it's something that we really love using uh, as, as many organic pest control methods as possible. And encouraging beneficial insects in the garden is a great way to not only encourage nature to do what it does best, but help you save money in the process. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.